Okay, Anthony, in order to think about something, you have to extract it from the general flow of activity. Uh, that's unavoidable. Uh, unfortunately, in your case, you've cut out just a little bit too much and we've lost the context of what it is Vygotsky is talking about. So I'm going to expand your original quotation. Okay. Um, so you can put what I'm reading on the screen as well, make it easier to follow. Okay, so I'm reading bits here. Introspection at the beginning of the school age. Okay, so that's the topic being discussed. The child makes a transition from nonverbal to verbal introspection. Okay, so he's looking at a specific stage of development where a child is making a transition from nonverbal to verbal introspection. He develops internal, meaningful perception of his own mental processes. Right? It's a wonderful idea. The beginning of being able to look at your own mental processes. Okay. However, it is whether, and, and notice this, he's making a broader point. Whether it is external or internal, meaningful perception is generalized or abstracted perception. He's putting together the internal perception, perceiving one's own mental activity with external perception, perceiving uh, things and you know happening around you in the external world. And he's making a point that uh, perception, if it's to be meaningful, that is not, just not a not a meaningless rush of colours and sounds in front of you, but something that's meaningful, you know, like a face of a person you recognise or a word that you can pronounce or something. Uh, meaningful perception is generalised or abstracted perception. Okay, so you have to. Pick something out of its background in order for you to perceive it meaningfully. And notice how he puts together generalized or abstracted, as if they're, they're um, uh, two words meaning the same thing. Right? So if you want to have a generalized understanding of something, something meaningful, that is to say, the when you, you're looking at not just a blur of, of colors and sounds, but for instance, a cat, because I've got a cat sitting here, right? Then uh, you, you're, it's generalized because in seeing this and recognizing it as a cat, I connect it with through the word cat with all the millions of other things in the world which are called cat, right? So it's generalized. Abstraction and generalization go together. So we read on. Consequently, the transition to verbal introspection represents the initial generalization or abstraction of internal mental forms of activity. Okay, so he's saying that when awareness of your internal state uh, moves to this uh, stage of uh, awareness of uh, like an internal voice, where you not only have internalized a, a speech, speaking silently and using it in the process, but you become aware of the words that you're using. You can sort of listen to yourself thinking. Now, this is important because it is through words, generally speaking, uh, the generalizations happen, where we inherit the, the accumulated uh, meaning of thousands of years of human history uh, in uh, a word, all the meanings and associations that have been tagged on and connected to a word, we inherit that through when we've taken these words into our internal mental life, we've picked up on all that cultural history. And when we can observe our own use of these words internally, we become aware of that, right? Now, he reads on. I think this is the bit where your quote started. 
To perceive something in a different way means to acquire new potentials for acting with respect to it. Okay, so we know what he's talking about. You've got a, a you, you're now able to perceive your own activity, including your own thoughts, in a different way. And, and he gives an example of this. At a chessboard, to see differently is to play differently. You know, when you get to a point looking at a chessboard where you can see the bishops and rooks lines, you can see what's certainly what. So it's going to affect how you play. By generalizing the process of the activity itself, I acquire the potential for a new relationship. To speak crudely, it is as if the process has been isolated from the general activity of consciousness. Okay, now, the, the chessboard doesn't really help you understand that. But when you know what he's talking about, it's clear, isn't it? That, that there's all this stuff going on in the world, things in front of you, your thoughts inside, your feelings, yeah. But if you can get through all that and look at the words that you're using, isolate them from the, all the rest, you know, it all goes quiet. You, you think of these words that you're using, okay, then uh, th th this is a new stage of development that gives you new potential. You clearly, by the ability to turn your thinking onto your thinking itself, it's a step towards freedom. Yeah? It's always the case, yeah? self-control. To speak crudely, I have done that. I am conscious of the fact that I remember. Right? So it's one thing to just, you know, at a certain stage you develop, you remember things, you don't remember things. But when you're aware of remembering something, then you're better likely to be able to control it. When you make remembering the object of conscious, and you think, how did I remember that? What makes me remember that? If I want to remember something new, what should I do to make sure I remember it? You're getting control of your process of memory. An isolation arises here. That is to say, for example, you're picking out memory among other functions. In a certain sense, any generalization or abstraction isolates its object. Okay? This is why conscious awareness, understood as generalization, leads to mastery. So now he's pulling the whole thing together. Conscious awareness is this where you are deliberately paying attention to the your thought processes, then through verbal thought, understanding them as generalizations, and by ignoring, in a sense, everything else going on around them, all the feelings and cross currents of thought and perceptions and things going on, you, you're able to concentrate on them, understand what you're doing, and, and control it, it leads directly to mastery. It's abundantly clear, isn't it? Joy. Now, we'll read on the second paragraph. Thus, the foundation of conscious awareness is the generalization or abstraction of the mental, uh, mental processes, which leads to the mastery. Okay, this is just what he said. Instruction has a decisive role in this process. <clears throat> so a new element is brought in here. How does this come about? Look, it's necessary uh, for this to happen, generally speaking, not, you know, like 100%, you know, without exception, but generally speaking, you, you become aware of this through uh, people uh, telling you things, telling you how to do things, drawing your attention to what you're doing, um, giving you access to your new words and explaining something, um, reflecting on what you did, reflecting back to you yeah so generally speaking this uh self awareness of this of, of, of verbal processes which can lead to their mastery comes through instruction now it's the he said it's the, later on he refers it to it being the gateway doesn't he because but after, once mastery of a process has been gained, you can build on that and you know, gain more mastery without 
instruction. Okay. Scientific concepts have a unique relationship to the object. Okay, what does he mean by scientific concepts? To a certain extent, uh, he's using the scientific concepts to stand for, in general, concepts which are received by means of instruction in some institution. Really, he doesn't mean scientific concepts as opposed to, for example, uh, theological concepts or the concepts of how to play baseball or the concepts of how to tie up your shoelaces or how to dress properly when going to a tea party. Right? Any institution conveys its knowledge to others and builds itself as a regular um, you know, self-regulating form of activity through concepts. Um, the, its awareness of these concepts and ability to, to uh, act in line with concepts that enables you to participate in a regular collective activity. Now, this relationship is mediated through other concepts that themselves have an internal hierarchical relationship system of interrelationships. So a science contains a hierarchy of concepts. You know, at the top is like the founding uh, principle of the science, you know, the cell and uh, the principle of, of evolution, uh, the basis of biology, the principles of, of acting on evidence and so on. And then you have, you know, enzyme, uh, virus, uh, organism, and various subordinate concepts, right? Concepts come in a hierarchy. But it's apparently in this domain of scientific concept that conscious awareness of concepts or generalization and mastery of concept emerges for the first time. Okay, so he, he, he's saying that when a child, generally speaking, gets to school age, attends an institution where they are given regular uh, planned instruction according to the norms of the society of which they are a part, and for the first time have their attention drawn to the meaning of certain words that may be outside their everyday experience, um, I mean, he was uh, living in the 20s in uh, earliest days of Soviet Russia and school children would have been taught the principles of Marxism and socialism. Right? They were, these concepts would not have been concepts that arose out of everyday experience. The teachers would tell them about them and they would have to pay attention, learn texts and, and, and get their head around the meaning of these terms. And at this stage in their development, they're for the first time uh, learning to, to reflect on their own thinking in terms of uh, the, the, the concepts known by name that they're using in their thinking. Yeah? And so, and it's the, the beginning of a process of being conscious, consciously aware of your own thinking. You know, becoming a person that's able to, to make decisions in a consciously aware way about your own life. Once a new structure of generalization has arisen in one sphere of thought, it can, like any structure, be transferred without training at all to all remaining domains of concepts and thought. And this is the magical thing, you see, that Vygotsky sees um, mental or personal development going through a series of steps and there will be a certain range of activity which will, by which the child will get from this step to that step they'll make that kind of leap uh, with assistance uh, with others but once they, you, you've done that then it magically turns out you can get that new level of self-control awareness you can bring it to bear on a range of other things and so suddenly 
not suddenly actually, specifically gradually over the next uh, you know few months maybe, uh, and you 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 generalize that uh, new insight level of self control across a whole range of activities, right? So it's a bit like a virus. Once the virus gets into your body, it affects everywhere. Once you get this new insight into how you can uh, consciously control your own thinking, uh, and you learn that maybe you know in in the class on on uh, history perhaps, or whatever it might be, uh, then you, you realize yeah, you can do that right across. So this is how just learning one thing leads to a transformation of the whole. It says, thus conscious awareness enters through the gate opened up by the scientific concepts. So conscious awareness, he means this, means being self-aware not just bumbling along responding to what happens in a spontaneous way but actually consciously charting and mapping your own path controlling the way you react to the different things you come up against aware of what you're doing this is how one wants to be as a citizen of a country not just bowling around by you know propelled this way or that way by events, but acting consciously, self-aware. This begins through, he says, scientific concepts, more generally instruction. Doesn't mean to say that the child is instructed in the totality of the ways to lead their life as a citizen. No, no, no. It's through instruction that they first become consciously aware of their own thinking and having achieved that they can then generalize that right so they, they, the, this is the gateway through instruction in the, the scientific concept that gives them conscious awareness of their action within a, a narrow domain leads to the ability to be consciously aware across the whole uh, breadth of life now again, understand that scientific concepts, um, in the way we understand that term now, is meant uh, much more generally. Yeah? Okay, I hope that helps. See you.